Exercise eight. So we're gonna be talking about and working with, for this exercise, using perspective rule number three and number four, inclined perspective number three, and declined perspective number four, right? For diagonal vanishing points for spatial measurement of equal and unequal spaces. It sounds exciting, right? It's not, it's really boring. Skip to the next lesson. No, I'm teasing, it's, it's good to know, it's good to happen, it's good to have happen because you can use measuring devices, especially when you go deeper, when we go deeper, way later on into different sections, we're gonna to need to have inclined vanishing points and decline vanishing points and those are gonna be our, our spaces for equal measuring. So we're gonna to need to have that under our belt and it's pretty, pretty fun to, to have. Some of these are dry, I get it. And I understand, maybe they're a little dry for me to make, but they're, they're important lessons if you're going to be a, a complete student. And, and you know, I, I want everybody to realize these videos, all of them, for every section that I do at, at uh, the drawing database, it's meant for the serious artist. It's meant for, for somebody who wants to better themselves, whether you're a hobbyist or whether you're going to be a professional or want to, want to be a professional and you're studying towards that. It's meant to be not a how-to, but a why, and what are the processes to advance your knowledge, not a quick, easy kind of fix. I, I see that far too often, and I think that's why it's important to study with mentors, not just me, but anybody you feel that can elevate your work to a very much a higher dimension. Okay, so let's get started here, after I got off that uh, soapbox for a moment. So we're gonna start out with a van uh, horizon line here and about right there so we'll draw one across here okay we'll have that over let me continue it on on through so we'll have that so my uh, T square is not quite long enough so we'll have our horizon line all the way through now we're gonna set a vanishing point here okay and we're gonna call that VP and then we're going to have an elevated vanishing point. I want to show you how we can get equal spaces too with a, a, a vanishing point that is elevated. And we're going to put it, just arbitrarily speaking, about right there. And so we'll call that VPI or INC for inclined right in through there. Okay? All right. So. <clears throat> There, there may be times where you're going to need an incline vanishing point for equal measurements or to utilize for a certain plane or dimension, and, and we're going to kind of practice that now. So let's put out a vertical here, about right here. Looks pretty good. And then we're going to go back. I'll use my red pencil. We're going to take our depth back to our first vanishing point here okay and here very nice clean pretty neat let me sharpen my red pencil a bit and let you catch up right there okay so I can see that in my camera not paying attention like I should let me pull this out so you can see that how about that is that better yeah, that's better. Okay, you can actually see that. How nice, how nice of me not to do that. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we have that in there so you can see that where I put the vanishing point. Make sure we get that correct. That's going to be uh, very much appropriate. All right, so now we can use this as an equal measurement guide. This is pretty interesting. So watch this. So from the corner of our plane, we can decide how long it, it is too by using that VP. And we'll draw a diminishment line back to the corner where it bisects right through there. That's, you guessed it, that's where our plane can be. So the vanishing point determines the length of the plane. And let me darken this in a little bit so we can see it. Make sure I look up at the camera. So those of you that don't know, I have a camera mounted. It's pretty obvious, I would think, but I have an apparatus in my in my studio office here that I have mounted a camera to, and it goes around my desk. And it's, it's raised up here about, I don't know, about maybe two and a half, three feet, and it's, and it's shooting direct down. Obviously, I can take the camera and, 
and move it in and out a little bit. So just FYI on that. So now from this new corner, we can go back to our incline vanishing point and we get the same depth measurement as this plane when it bisects right through there. Now it's in it's in perspective and it's, so it's foreshortening and you're going to find that the foreshortening gets pretty quick. Happens really well, really, really quick. This is also going to come in handy for windows or columns or divisions on windows later on when we need it. We'll use this technique to divide like railing posts for fences and things of that nature. So let's keep going. If you know the technique, run a bunch of them out there. So from this corner, back to our vanishing point here. You know, you learn this stuff and the great thing is you want to take copious good notes because you won't use some of it for a while and you'll forget it. And there will be a point where I need it and you'll want to come back to your notes, which is what I've done through here. Okay, and I'll darken this in a little bit so we can see it a little bit better, distinguish it from the red line. Let's do one more. So now we'll have four equal spaces using a vertical vanishing point to determine the length of our partition. So from here back to the incline vanishing point right through there where it bisects there. And we have that. One more. All right, there we go. Okay. And of course, these could be boxes. We could have another vanishing point to the left, and then we could make boxes out of these two if we wanted. All right, there we go. So we're using rule number three here the rule of perspective at inclines, right? Rule number three, right in through here. And so these now, these spaces are equal. We have one, two, three, four equal spaces. And look how foreshortened it starts to get as we go forward. Now, if we wanted to find the true center of this all the way back through there, how would we do that? Well, we're crossing X right all the way through. That's another way to do it. But that would we would have already determined what we wanted. So here we term, determine the length by the degree which with which we went to our vertical vanishing point. Keep that in mind. Okay, so let's go on to uh, and use a down below here on this piece of paper. Let's use a decline vanishing point and let's do the same kind of exercise now over here. So what I'm going to put over here now is a horizon line here across, okay? And let me extend it out a little further just to make sure it goes all the way through my paper. I may need it. I'll just line that up. Okay, we have that. All right, so I'll establish my vanishing point <coughs> here. So VP there's my VP right there. And then we're going to bring down from our first vanishing point a decline vanishing point. So vanishing point declined about that deep. Make sure it's on the camera. You can see it. Yep, you can. So I'll put a point there, VP, and we'll put DEC for declined right through there. All right. So now we're going to be working up here. Remember, in this diagram, this was the sky plane, this was the ground plane. Now in this diagram over through here, this is the sky plane and this is the ground plane over here. We're having a declined vanishing point now. So let's set out some, uh, uh, let's set out a plane that we can work with in perspective in the sky plane. So we're going to recreate this a little bit, but we're going to do it up above now. <clears throat> so let's put a nice plane dimension here. Okay, here's the top, here's the bottom, here's the top of the line, which will be our plane. And then we'll go back to our vanishing points, okay, with our depth projection here, or our di diminishment right through there. Okay, so now we're going to get a sense of what kind of length that we want. And the way, again, the way to do that is from the corner of our plane 
right here back to the vertical, excuse me, the <clears throat> declined vanishing point right through there. Okay, all the way back where it touches. That's the length that's created. So I'll take my triangle and I will draw it up. I'll trace over these in darker in a moment. We'll go a little bit faster here and there. And so you know how to do this already, right? We just did it a little bit opposite. So we take that and from this corner, we go back to our decline vanishing point here. There's our next one. Draw our vertical up. Or you can do it like this, downward, up and down, as long as you align your triangle to your T-square. We have another one from this point back to the vanishing point here. Boom, where it touches, right there. So that gives us three. <clears throat> You'll be surprised at how all these techniques will arise in your perspective understanding. And the goal, again, is to become a much better visual conceptualizer of three-dimensional space as you train in perspective. And then the last one, again, from the corner back to the decline vanishing point, and we'll put another vertical here, okay? And then now I can darken these in a little darker. Here and here. And now we have four equal spaces that were determined by a decline vanishing point. So we have one plane, two plane, three plane, and four plane. And look how foreshortened they get very, very quickly. So the foreshortened happens very, very fast. This is rule number four, the rule of decline in perspective. So if we want a declination, <clears throat> we have to alter our vanishing point from the same position lowered in our picture plane. This becomes rule number four then. All right, so let's go on to one more and I'll show you how we can uh, use uh, rule number three for raised vanishing points to create equal and unequal spaces. So both equal and un unequaled spaces and we'll need a few more vanishing points to do that. Okay, let me change paper. You can change paper too. I'll come right back and we'll do that. So now the next section of lesson number eight is to create equal and unequal spaces using a <clears throat> inclined uh, vanishing point. And now we're actually gonna use a couple. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set out a, <clears throat> excuse me, a little catch there, a vanishing, uh, excuse me, horizon line here. So we'll draw our horizon line nice and clean across here. And we'll set up a vanishing point here. And so we'll label that VP1 right in through there. Okay, so we have that. <clears throat> now we're going to create uh, a vertical from the vanishing point up. And I'm going to do it this time in a little different color, maybe red again, up here to show you we're going to incline all the way up pretty high there. See how far it goes. We're going to create a couple of, of distances and spaces. So we're going to create <clears throat> our incline for our uh, one length will be here. So we're going to call that vanishing point A, and then we're going to raise up our another VP incline vanishing point. We're going to call that VP B. So we have make sure this is in the camera. Yeah, barely, but okay. Make sure. There's no point doing a lesson and you can't see it. That <laughs> that, that defeats the purpose. For sure. All right, so now we're going to create a series of planes. Now this can happen if you're creating railing on, on uh, fences or windows in a cathedral or walls. You'll be surprised at how much you may need to fall back on this technique later on. So let's put this, put this in the sky plane and the ground plane. Remember that this is the sky plane right out here and this is the ground plane. This is where we sit, stand on the ground. This is sky up through here. Okay, so let's create a plane with uh, right now with a line first, right in through here. So about that length. And by the way, I've got a larger, you noticed a larger sheet of paper, 18 inches by 24 inches. Okay, so our first diminishment is always back to our vanishing point on the horizon line because we're level 
and we're sitting down on the ground. Remember that, that's important. So that's the first thing. Remember, we're going to be creating equal spaces with our other two vanishing points, but our depth projection going back to rule number one and two is our first vanishing point. Okay, so back to the vanishing point or from, from out from the vanishing point to create our diminishment through here. Okay, that's important. All right, so now what we want to do is see what kind of length is created by our VP here. So what we have now, since we're pretty far out and away, we're going to be creating a link from where we line up this point here to our first vanishing point. That's our first length right in through there. So we'll draw an incline line to that VP where it bisects. That's our first length right there. It's pretty long. Maybe that's longer than I wanted, but I think it'll show you the technique because we're going to get foreshortened pretty quickly through here. All right, so there we go. We have it there. We'll bring down that vertical and let me go ahead and darken this in a little bit. So this is plane A and we're going to create it at least a couple of times and now we're going to go for plane B in between two plane A's. All right, so this is A. That's an A. Now for B, what we want to do is from the, you guessed it, from the bottom of that line, go up to vanishing point, incline vanishing point B here, draw a diagonal where they connect right there where it touches, that's plane B. And so it was always going to be shorter and it's really shorter too because of our foreshortening. So there's plane B right there in between, or that could be an open space like we did before, but we'll say it's plane B right there. And I'm going to darken this in, darken that in right there. So that's plane B. Now let's go back and recreate plane A, but, but of course now it's going to be in perspective and that's why we're studying depth. So from a diagonal from the bottom corner here, right, back to uh, inclined vanishing point A, here. And what do you notice? It's longer than B. It's, it's already foreshortened quite a bit. B was always going to be shorter. Now A, we draw A, our next one, and it's going to be greatly foreshortened than our first A because it goes back, it diminishes, but it's still longer than B. That's what perspective does for us. These are greatly exaggerated, unequal spaces. We've already talked about equal spaces. If we wanted all equal spaces, we would just use a or B exclusively, and we wouldn't use the other one. Now you could also do C, D, and E, and you could have all kinds of unequal spaces. So this is A, B, and then A again, and now to create, recreate B, where do we go? You guessed it, right back from this corner right to vanishing point B. I'm going to shorthand it now, right through here to there. There's another B in perspective. right there. Bisect that line. I'm going to go ahead and trace over them to make it darker. It takes a little longer. Right there and right there. Okay. Here we go. Now that's B. So we see another B plane here that gets more foreshortening because we're getting greatly diminished back to our vanishing point. Now let's create another another A plane. We go back to from this corner, you got it, back to vanishing point A, bisect right there, and what you're going to find is we're going to repeat this pattern. A will be always be bigger than B. They're unequal spaces, and that's important to, to denote and realize here and here. There we go. That's it. So A, B, A, B, back to A, and let's do one more, one more B. So from A, or excuse me, the bottom of this post, back to, to now to B, it bisects there, and we're good to go. These could be gates, or these could be stone, stone walls with openings, or different kinds of stone. 
Maybe we'll do, I'll do one more actually with this lesson and we'll do three different, different spaces. I have unequal spaces, I think that will be instructive too as well. We'll do A, B, and C. You'll really get the idea, I think, too, as well. All right, and that's a B right there. So we have unequal spaces. I'll color in the B spaces so you can see that. Or you could think of them as open, too, right? These could be totally open. The point is, is that we're using vertical vanishing points, Incline vanishing points, actually, not vertical vanishing points, but incline vanishing points, rule number three in this case, to create unequal planes that we can repeat by raising or lowering these incline vanishing points. And the true diminishment that we wanted was set up by the one on the horizon line. So we're using rule number one, right, and two and also rule number three of inclined, inclined planes to get equal spaces. It's another way to get equal spaces. Okay, I'm gonna go to a new sheet of paper and let's do the same thing now, but let's do uh, three unequal spaces. Let's do A, B, and C. And so you can understand that even, I think, more, more clearly. Okay, so now let's do another version and let's do one where we're creating three uh, unequal spaces, yet we'll recreate them enough times to where A will equal A, B will equal B, C will equal C spaces, but A and B and C will be different. Now, if that's confusing to you, I get it. I'm gonna try to clear that up pretty quickly. It's all visual, and it's totally not as hard as you, as you think. I guarantee that. So we're just gonna recreate what we did. We're gonna just flip it a little bit, and we're gonna create a vanishing point here Okay, there's our VP right there. So that's VP ground plane vanishing point. And then we're gonna come up here and I'm going to throw a vertical line. It's gotta be a vertical line, rule number three of perspective. All the way up here in red so you can see it until it kind of disappears. All right, so now what I wanna do before I set my unequal links, I wanna get my first plane out here. We're gonna put it in the sky plane and the ground plane. A little bit. Remember, this is sky plane. This is all ground out here, so you can see that. And so I think I'll make it about this plane about this tall. Make sure you can see that. I think we got all the paper in, so we're good. Now, because it sits, the plane sits on the ground. I'm going to demarcate that right there. We will use our depth projection for our diminishment, not our, our measuring. Remember, we're measuring and we're using depth. This goes back now to the, the ground vanishing point right there. Shoot for that right there. That'll give our diminishment there and also to line it up. Make sure to get it back and to there. There we go. All right, so now we have our depth projection. Now the reason I didn't set up my vanishing points yet, I wanna make sure I get enough spaces so they can we can work this. So here's what I'm thinking. You get my thinking behind this lesson, is I've gotta figure out where a plane would end to give, give us enough kind of room for some cool unequal spaces and make enough. If I make it too low, it's too long, it kind of defeats the purpose. So I gotta start thinking about how I want these to work. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put right here. I think we can all see that through, okay. This is A here. Whoops, broke that. Always breaking, breaking leads. There's A. That'll give me a chance to slow it down a little bit. That was a good break, by the way. That was the one where it scares you. You flinch a little bit, so it happens. So we have A there, let me sharpen up to get back. All right, I'm gonna pull the camera out to make sure we can see this. There we go, now you can see it even better. Okay, so that's A, then I'm gonna put B here. Okay, B is there. And I'm gonna put C, yeah, you can see that a little bit higher, A, B, and C. All right, so, <clears throat> I'm gonna go for um, 
C first, actually, and I'm going to need a pretty long ruler to do it to make this work. So I'm going to use the back end of this for there to line that up. Okay, so I'm lining up again my back corner here of, of uh, the end of my line here on the ground, the ground plane, lining it up with C, and I'm going to shorthand the line. It goes all the way up and through. Okay, that's important. Where it touches, it's going to be important. Where it touches that top, right in through there, that's where the, the spacing of plane C is going to be, right there. All right, so we'll bring down a vertical. So that's C, okay, right through here. Now we'll go from the bottom, and let's shoot for B. Let's make a B, so that's C. I think I have enough length now to work, yep. So let's make a plane B using that incline vanishing point through here, right through there. I'm just drawing all the way through to right there. Where it bisects that top line. That will be plane B. Right there. There's B. And now let's do an A. A will even be a little shorter. So from this bottom corner, still need that long ruler. Yeah, through A. Okay, we'll draw a line from A. I'll, I'll shorthand it from A all the way to the corner right there. Where it touches, that is our A post right there. Okay, right there. So there's A. Now, it looks like they're converging nicely, but what happens, we're going to go back to C and then go back to B and A, and you're going to find this pattern repeating because C is not the same length as B here, and they, so they will look different when they're foreshortened. This is what this lesson is about is making sure you get accuracy. So let's go back and recreate now this plane C here for unequal spacing. So from the bottom line up to C, right? And then we'll draw a line through and where it touches, right there. There's C. <clears throat> There's plane C right there. Now let's go get B our corner up to B right there okay and through where it touches right there there's B and then we'll draw our line you get the procedure right there there's B I'll label it as I go CB now let's go to A from our bottom here to vanishing point A incline vanishing point A until it touches right there there we go and A. Now let's recreate the same thing one more time. C, plane C, B, and A. C, B, and A. Let's do the same thing. Now we go back to C here, up to C. Okay, draw through where it touches, right there. There's C. Got it there. Label that C. And you're going to find B getting even a little shorter. Okay. Or actually a little longer, sorry. B to there. Touches right there. <coughs> That's B. And let's create space A using our A inclined vanishing point through there there's a so I'm, I'm just shorthanding I'm not drawing the whole line right in through there that's what I did so you'll see it I want to get you confused there's a right there and now we've got two sets of unequal spaces but that are also in their compartmentalization are also they're actually equal. So C, C space is equal to each other, but they're foreshortened. Why? Because we're talking about depth in perspective. That's really important to know. If we were drawing out a plane view, they would all have the same length 
I'll show you what I mean by that. Watch this. So now we're getting that foreshortening aspect right in perspective. So that's what we want. This is why we're using these inclined vanishing points is to keep our, man, our, our measurements equal as we're going back into space. So C, C, and C are all the same equal dimension, but they're converging to the vanishing point, so they're foreshortened. The same thing with B, B, and B, and also the same thing with A, A, and A. A here. They're all the same. That's important to realize. So if I did a plane view up here to show you what it looks like flat, flat, this might be an imaginary drawing of what this looks like. So I'll show you this. They would all look like this, okay? And we could say then something would be happening where C might be here. B might be here, and A might be here. So this is C, this is B, and this is A, and we just recreate that. If we recreated C, we'd bring that same dimension over, and we'd start over again, and C would be longer than the other two. That's important to realize. So when we're talking about perspective, we get this situation in in depth, in dimension. Really important stuff to, to get a hold of. Very important as well. Then of course you could project, watch this, you could project lines in the ground, horizontal lines to get equal spacing now on the ground too as well. And see how that helps too? That's good stuff right there and also right there. And look at that and you're on your way. You could pick a point here if you wanted. And you could go back to the ground vanishing point right there, line it up there to there, and then you've got the same kind of equal spaces now on the ground as well. So if you're wanting a lot of tessellation or tiles in your composition or railings for, for fences or whatnot in different dimensions and spaces or stained glass windows, this is going to be a technique that you'll use a lot of. Really, really will help you. And, it, and the main purpose too, it will help you in your sketching, your relaxed perspective as we go back and just sketch maybe sometimes with the ruler or not, but it's loose and quick and it's fresh and it's a very different approach to a very rigid, I, I say rigid, but, but a creative use of a more accurate angled and measured kind of linear perspective, which is what we're doing. Okay, there's a couple more things I want to show you with uh, uh, lesson number eight. So let's move on to one more sheet of paper. Okay, so I'm going to actually call this exercise nine. I changed my mind. And so for this one, we're going to be using a convenience vanishing point and incline, an incline vanishing point. So we're staying with rule number three for diagonal uh, spatial measurement of equal spaces, right? And there's something I'm not going to show you. So I'm, I'm hiding something a little bit. So what I'd like you to do is watch this video first and then go back and recreate it because I'm hiding something that you can't see in the composition I've got out of screen that I don't want you to see that is the purpose of this lecture. And it's about what happens when you are inconvenienced with too far of a distance like I was doing last time with my ruler for section uh, lesson, lesson eight. We can set a different vanishing point for our uh, diagonal measurement which equals something raised up higher. That might blow your mind. It did when I was a student. So let's see what that looks like. So just watch this one first all the way through and then let's draw along uh, after that. So I'm going to put a plane down. So I've got my setup actually by the way. I've got my horizon line, my uh, vanishing point on the ground. This is the sky plane. This is the ground plane right and I've got my vertical line where I'm going to put my vanishing points on that. So we're going to go back and create an equal space uh, diagram here of railings or fence railings or posts or whatever you want to think of them as, I suppose. So uh, let's set in our first one. Let's do it about right uh, here. We'll put it about right there. And 
that will be the length of our, our post and there it is sitting on the ground so we need our we need our diminishment back to the ground vanishing point so we you know how to do that that's not a problem right there's our diminishment from the vanishing point out to each line there this is a pretty cool handy technique if you're doing larger work too as well all right so here's what happens now I don't ha I have this off camera a little bit. I've got a vanishing point set up off camera and that's on purpose. You can't see it. So at the end of this lesson, I'm going to let the screen go out because I want you to see where it's at. And so it's a little long. I want to use it to set in my diagonal length and it's going to look like it's really a long stretch for me. I've got, I don't have enough ruler for it, but it's going to look like it's going to bisect about right here roughly roughly okay so that's what I'm thinking this length of here but you can't see it because it extends out what if your ruler's not long enough well I'll show you a technique that you can utilize to help you out what if what if we ran another line another convergence or diminishment line let's say about maybe right hmm if I go here and up and through maybe thinking right here and I'll show you what I'm thinking let's run it to our vertical our vanishing uh, our vanishing point on the ground let's do that all right so we got another distance there okay that's important to know this is a construction construction helper line okay so now what I'm thinking I'm gonna raise up a secondary vanishing point here to help me out. I'm going to put it much more reasonably spaced for our depth in our in our distance and I'll show you what that means. So I'm going to go back so I've got to, I've got to prove this works to you and now I've got to go go back and stretch and see how hard this is to make sure I get that accurately in perspective. And so I'm lining up my ruler with the vanishing point. I'm trying to gauge it as best I can right there. Okay, all the way over to that corner where it bisects is right there. So I'll push, I'll pull down now a, a vertical for where I want my equals, my first uh, section to be. These are going to be equal spaces, by the way. It'll be right there. Okay. So now I've got something good to work with. Now, because I've set a secondary space, I can come through this point to here and back over to a vanishing point that's much more reasonable and easy to work with much better to work with actually than what I have now let me pull my drawing board up just a little bit so you can see that better sorry about that okay make sure I get that right so that, that wasn't too bad I think you could pick that up since you're just watching it the first time all right so now we can go from this corner to find that vanishing point. So from this corner through here now, remember our earlier lessons, five, six, and seven, this pertains to that. We can go through this point here to there and find a much more reasonable vanishing point. So now I have a VP here. We'll call it inclined two because I have one up here, inclined one. I want, I'm not gonna show you that. Yet. Now we can work this in a much more kind of reasonable way, thank goodness. Now from this point here, right here, this line coming through, right? Now let's go back to our vanishing point, okay? To there, where it bisects right there. There's our next equal space from here. See how much easier that is than to have to go up way up high? What if it's even higher? later on it's going to be a problem there we go so we can set that there there's our next vertical space so a these are just they're all the same one so they're all equal so i'll write out here equal equal space spaces or equal planes if you will there we go Equal spaces or equal planes. Let's do it again. From this point here, back to the vanishing point there. Bingo. We're at bisects right there. Let's draw space here. Okay, here. Let's do it again. 
let's do it two more times. From right here, back to vanishing point two. Bingo, we're at bisect, right there. So there's several, there's a couple ways to do this. Let's do a few more. For here, right, right there, back to our vanishing point, we're just using a secondary measuring point that's lower, closer to our original or our horizon line to make it much more manageable. Let's do one more, okay? So from this point right here, where this line, our new measuring line is, back to the VP, right there where they merge, they touch, if you will, right there, there's our measuring point. All right. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, let me darken it in, the planes that we're talking about. Let me try not to break my pencil. Okay, there we go. Darken that in so you can see it there. I'll move that out of the way. Here to here. Okay, there we go. Now we've got, we've created how many? We've created one, two, three, four, five, six equal planes. We started out finding our length right through our first vanishing point up here that we can't see. It's just too hard. That's just too much. If it's even higher, that would be even harder. So what we did is we put a measuring line through, found that equal space, or you could find that equal space first. There are two ways you can do it, right? And we set that in and then we relaxed, had a much more relaxed vanishing point that we got in. Now, does it work? How do we know that that's really accurate? Well, I'm about to prove it and that's why I hid this from you. So let me pull the camera out wider so you can see this. You can see where my vanishing point is. Okay, so it's pull the camera, pull by drawing down just a little bit. Hopefully you can see it. Let me make sure I can I really have it set in for you. So it's right here. There it is. There's the vanishing point I originally used right there. Can you see it up there? Yeah. So there it is. That's what I shot for. Now, let's recreate that. Let's line up our ruler to these points to make sure this was truly accurate. Just to prove that what I did was on par. All right, so I'm going to use my longer ruler here. So we've got to come through these points here, 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 and here, and go all the way up to the vertical, uh, the, the vanishing point number one incline. Is it going to work? Is it going to line up? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. So I line it up, line it up, look at that. Boom. They're right on there. There's the alignment right there. Look at that. That works. So I proved it there. What about again? Can I line it up? It's lined up for me. There it is right there. Let me line it up again. There it is right there. Yep. And there it is. See how hard that is? That's a lot of effort. Ugh. Let's be kind to ourselves. It's drawing is hard enough if we can make it a little bit easier. And there it is right there. All of these lines now, including this one, this is the most important one, okay, go back to VP1, number one, all right, inclined. And we use a secondary one to make it more reasonable to measure and it's just as accurate. So there, there'll be times when you can do this decline too. You could just flip this process as well. Incline or decline. Everything you can do incline, you can also do decline, by the way. And then, so I'll come back in with my camera and you can see how that's, it was so much more reasonable and I can show my work here where outside we don't know. If that goes up you know, even higher, if it goes up another six inches, that's really unreasonable to work with. So I can move something over and just the lower I use that, the lower the line goes. And of course, if I kept going lower, right, I could go down to a decline even. This is good just to show you on the incline as well. Okay, so that, that was lesson actually number nine, and that's about using a secondary vanishing point, incline vanishing point, for convenience when you need to use that for measuring diagonals, for measuring depth.
Okay, remember we weren't finding the crossing X to find the center, we're just using an incline part to find secondary portions of what we were doing, okay? Because to find the true center of this is still pretty easy, right? You know how to do that. So we've already got one diagonal through, right? And there it is right there, right? And there's our center coming on through. Just another way to do measuring of equal spaces and also, of course, unequal spaces. We could take this form here and we could start to partition it into equal and unequal spaces. We could have a baseline that comes out here and then we could put down marks and then go back to a secondary vanishing point and then bring them up. So there are many different ways. We could also come out, you know, with verticals horizontal, or excuse me, horizontals out here for ground measurement too as well. So, so many things that you can do um, with linear perspective. It's a wide open and structured usage for you that can be just absolutely stunningly creative with use uh, in the mind of an engaged artist. Okay, so our next lesson will be lesson number 10. We're gonna go on now to measured perfect cubes with a 45 degree measuring point and a full setup of the fundamental four of the center vision, eye line, the station point, and the cone of vision. And I'll show you how to use a measuring point from the station point at 45 degrees, so you'll need a 45 degree triangle, and how you can get perfect cubes in perspective inside the cone, and I'll show you what distortion looks like outside of the cone. Okay, so that'll be lesson number 10 coming right up. Hope you enjoyed number nine.